Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. I uh, wanted to talk to you today about just a real simple grow room that someone was doing here, um, a customer of ours, and they're not doing like a grow and harvest. They're basically doing just um, the budding, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. So basically in a nutshell, um, the, the system, the electrical system will have a break. Um, I have another customer, he has a, quite a few plants, but he does the growing and, and then the harvesting, and he does them at the same time in separate rooms. Um, and so the electrical main panel never sees a break. And that's uh, something you gotta consider that when you're doing it, the code book says that anything over three hours, either residential or commercial, is considered continuous duty on that circuit or circuits. Um, so when he called me, at first he thought we would just put in a couple 110 plugs and after I explained everything to him, um, it was better not to do that and it was better just to barely oversize this. Um, in a nutshell, we just brought down a 6.3 Romex, real simple, brought it into this panel and we just had this to protect the, the wire because anything against a cement wall without studs, you have to protect it less than eight foot. And it is a main lug panel. There is no main disconnect. I don't need it because I already have one on the outside of the building. Um, this, plenty of room to grow here. This is a 1224 circuit space, so I could literally put in double twins in all of these if I needed to. Um, I use Siemens because I think Siemens is a really good panel. This load center is rated up to 125 amps, single phase for residential, 240 volts or 220, that's just a nominal term. Um, so that fed into here, and then this right here is what he purchased for us. And um, this right here is our timer clock. So this GFCI is basically what is controlling, if you can see the green light and come over here. So in a nutshell, he's doing it fairly simple. Um, this timer will turn it off if I don't have it in. It's just a simple light timer. The light timer does have to be rated for the correct wattage, which in this case it should be fine because this little contactor in here probably pulls uh, less than a quarter amp. Um, so in plugging that in, we, the reason why that's turning on is because we've just hit the test mode here on and off. Okay, so this contactor is pulling for two plugs Go ahead and look right there. These are 240 volt rated. They're probably a 6R20 or 7R4, I'm not sure, but with the two side-by-side -side eyes, it's just gonna be a straight three wire system. This did have to be based off of what it said at a 4,000 kW, okay? Um, also stating 30 amp, of course. Um, but if you did the math on it, if you were 4,000 kW divided by 240 volts, you're gonna end up with um, about 16.5 amps. If you're at like a 230 or 220, you're probably closer to 17 to 18 and a half amps. So the lower the voltage, the higher the ampacity. And that's the question he asked me when I got here for the estimate. Should we go 120 or should it be better just to reorder uh, cords from the ballast because these ballast will sense the 120 versus 240. Um, in a nutshell, if you're running your system at 240, it's better because you're doing less impacity. So right now with the contactor and all this running and his lights being as efficient as they are, I bet you I'm running 15 amps if he's running that. Um, so we could definitely have, you know, this 60 amp breaker feeding this or 50 amp, we could actually up it to a 60 amp, but we could definitely feed probably four more lights, the exact same wire. So, anyways, I just came through the panel to here, completed that circuit, this circuit, and then these ballasts will plug in from here to here, and from here and to here. And then at that point, this is your load side where this will snap. And that actually senses 120 versus the 240 right there. Um, and then we just gave him some choke collars right there and just kind of kept it together in one column so we're not taking up the whole wall this way. 
and then anchored everything to the cement. The cement's nice because it'll stay at 60 degrees and it'll actually keep those ballast a lot cooler. <laughs> Anyways, here's, I want to introduce you to JC and he can explain why he ordered this equipment. Well, I, I ordered this equipment because it's some of the best equipment that there is, of course, the Phantom Ballast. And uh, I bought two ballasts because I have 2,000 watts. That's, that's why I got the ballast and the uh, whole setup. So Phantom is what you've researched and they said that these are a really good dimmable yeah, digital ballast. You can dim them, you run 240 or 120. Okay. And then the lamps, um, do you have those that we could talk about? I mean, I have the, the outer, like the sunspot actual lights, but the lamps aren't. Go ahead, go ahead and come in here. So this is uh, his man cave, if you will. But um, in this system he has, it's just racks that are already pre-set up. And his wires will just come down and go through those holes over there. And um, basically, if I can try to, can you see that? Not too well. Yeah, sorry. Let's see if I got a light here. Okay, so in here you can see this cord. This is um you you're using this cord. Yeah. But your other cord that you're wiring is the line side from the contactor to the ballast that has to be a 220. Yes. This is already rated to be sense either way. And uh, this actually states right here, um, the neutral and uh, the hot in your ground, yep. So yeah, that, that, that ballast is a pretty fancy ballast. These are a thousand watt uh, metal halides that'll screw right into there. If you can go LED, um, I've heard Lush is a really good brand. You're gonna pay a lot for those, but those lights um, with the LED, you can manipulate the render effect of doing high pressure sodium versus metal halide. High pressure sodium is gonna be more of your Kelvin at the warm, probably closer to 2,500 to 3,000, where metal halide will be your brighter color, up to a 4,000 Kelvin, uh, maybe more like a 3,800 or somewhere in there. Um, LED will definitely go brighter than that. They get up to a 6,000 easily. Um, but with this, he's going to go the old school metal halide. But these are very nice ballasts because they are multi-sensing for either way that you plug in your voltage. And But as long as you're feeding it with 240, it'll sense it and then send it out with that same exact cord right here, which he'll be this setup right here. Um, but anyways, guys, yeah, sorry the video is a little long. Just thought I would show you uh, one other point upstairs in the panel, um, this house has a 100 amp service. Um, when somebody's pulling about 15 amps like that, it's not a real big deal. Um, he doesn't have electrical base heat. He's not welding on his home. He does have an electric dryer and he does have an electric range. Um, but he doesn't have a hot tub as well. Um, so the things that you gotta be uh, concerned about is they do have a low kelp on a home to figure out where that where you need to be, and that's back in the uh, the uh, 2014 code book, the NEC. It's going to change here in six months. But in the appendix, I think it's D. It'll show you an example of your low calc on a home. Um, also, in I think it's 210.19, if I'm not mistaken, or 220.19, they talk about what you're allowed to do and what you're not. Um, and you typically don't want to be more than 80% on a 100 amp breaker. But I have seen homes go up to 95 amps and not have an issue. Because remember that your appliances are cycling. Even if your range and your dryer are on at the same time, they're not consistently staying hot. They have a high limit and low limit thermostats inside of them that are going to cycle on and off to cook your food or dry your clothes. Um, your hot tub, most people don't stay in those things more than 30 to 45 minutes. Um, they do have a circulation pump, but that's minimal. It's usually when you're in it in the dead of winter and you're trying to get it heated up and then you jump in it for three, four hours. That is considered more continuous. Um, but the biggest thing I've seen with homes that'll cause an issue is your electrical baseboard heating. Or some of the homes I've seen, even in Estes Park, where in the drywall, they actually have electrical elements that were plastered in like back in the 60s. So um, those are the things that we have to look for is the electrical heating in the home. Because in a, in a nutshell, when you're wiring up a grow room um, and you're doing your harvest versus your, um, um, 
your grow versus your harvest, those two systems side by side will never give this electrical system on your house a break. Um, at least what I have seen, but again, I, I don't grow myself and um, it, it's just something I help people wire with. So um, anyways, if there's any comments you guys have on there to uh, give me some input, we appreciate the positive input and um, uh, hopefully this video will help you out. Again, this is not for the guys that are do-it-yourself that you think you know how to do it. If you don't know the load calcs, if you don't know how to size your wire, if you don't know how to wire in the voltages, um, you could cause a fire. And I almost had a fire with a guy that happened two years ago, and he messed up. He was in a commercial application, and um, he bought all 240 volt rated valves at single phase. His commercial outfit was running at 212 for voltage. It's usually 208 or 212. Somewhere in there is that soft spot. But he was at 212, and um, his ballast just sat there on a block of wood, and he had a bunch of them, and he was just starving them. And so that, that lack of 20% of voltage, actually is more like about 12%, it actually um, kept burning up ballast, and he didn't know why. Well, that's because the ballast has to be rated for commercial application to go as low as 212. Um, if it's a house and it's at 220 to 240, there's usually a plus or minus 5-6% there that you're okay to do that. Um, anyways, thanks guys. Uh, have a good day.